I went to Haiti many years ago. Early 1960s. I was just a young boy. When I arrived in that nation, one of the most demon-infested nations in the world, just a little short air flight from the United States of America, America needs to be ashamed of itself. You say, why, Mars? Because we claim to have so much Christianity and we allow just an hour away from our shores one of the most demon-infested nations in the world. And we can't take it. Come on, don't look at me with that look. As a little boy, God sent me over there. Crusade, big stadium, downtown. Before I got there, my posters and handbills were torn down by the priests. And they took them into their orgies. And they put them up in their little huts. And they stuck me full of pins. And they marched around me trying to put curses on me. When I landed, it was quite an experience. We were there as the guest of the president, Duvalar, the dictator. Now is dead, son's been thrown out of the country. You all know what's happened in Haiti. When I landed there, and a large group of business people were there with Brother Cyrilo, 20 or 30, the senators came out to meet us. Senator Arthur Bonhomme, who who is a wonderful Christian, spirit-filled. They had a long motor arcade ready to go by the palace. I got off of the plane, was escorted into the leading car, long, sleek, black car. And all of a sudden, I got sick in the pit of my stomach. I said to my song leader who was alongside of me, that time it was a Swedish man. I said to him, tell that driver to get out of this motor arcade. He said, you can't do that. We're going by the palace. I said, I can't help it. Palace, no palace. Get me out. He said, what's the matter? I said, don't ask any questions. He said to Arthur, sitting in the front seat, he said, Brother Srila wants out. He wants to go to his hotel room. And he turned around and he looked at me. I said, I'm awful sorry. I don't mean to be disruptive. I said, but I have got to get to my hotel room. So it broke out of the motor arcade, took me to my hotel room. I fell on the floor in a pool of sweat. I said, God, what is going on? 1961. I said, what is going on? I said, I'm, I feel like I'm dying. My stomach is, is in terrible pain. God said, son, I allowed this to happen to you for a reason. I wanted you out of that motor arcade. I wanted to talk to you. All of a sudden, my pain left. I'm lying on the floor in this hotel room. I said, what is it, God? God said, I wanted to tell you that tonight there's 300 witch doctors coming to kill you. I said, that's fine. I'm not consecrated unto life. I'm consecrated unto death. I said, now what? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to die as a martyr? God said, no. He said, I'm going to tell you how to identify him. And he showed me how to identify him. Showed me the color of the clothes that they were going to be wearing. And he showed me how to pick them out of the crowd. <laughs> the 
Then he said to me the most startling thing. He said to me, son, and I never even thought about this scripture way back in 1961 and about Jeremiah. He said to me, son, he said, tonight, the word that you speak will be exactly as if I have spoken it. And whatever you speak, I'll bring to pass. I got out there to the meeting. There was 30,000 people. It was a riot. It was a mess. Demas Shikarian, at that time, who was president of the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship, has now gone on to be with Jesus. He was trying to lead the service, trying to get order. I mean, it was havoc. When I walked into the stadium, there was no place for me to get through. I had to walk through the crowd. Got up on the stage. As soon as I got up there, no introduction. He turned around, walked off, and gave me the microphone. <laughs> place was a mess. I stood up, greeted the people, started to talk. And God showed me what they were going to do. <laughs> Little chance. They started here and they went here and they went there and they went the other place. And I called for order. Hold that chanting on that organ. <laughs> Sing Amazing Grace or something. I called for order. They stopped. I went on talk for two or three more minutes, and they started again. God showed me they're going to rush the platform. They're going to kill me. I called for order. They stopped. They started again. I'll never forget my little interpreter. He was a Bible school student. I won't tell you what was already happening to him. He was wet. <laughs> they speak a Creole French language. I turn around, I put my finger in his face, and I said to him, son, I said, I know how you feel. I said, but don't you dare say one word, but exactly what I say. Then I told the people, I said, people of Haiti, there are hundreds of witch doctors here tonight. And I said, you've come to kill me. You say, how do I know this? I said, because the living God told me. Now, this is no fooling. That platform was filled with dignitarians because when you're invited by the dictator, they're all there. Place was filled with senators, full gospel businessmen, Demas Shikarian were all on the platform. And I said, God, the living God, has told me that you've come here tonight to kill me. I said, now I know exactly where you are and who you are. And I started to point them out. <laughs> 300 of them. And I said, tonight, we're going to find out. Whether the devil that you serve or the God that I serve has more power. And I turned around to the senators and the wives sitting there with their little white babushkas on their head. 
trying to act like they were Catholic. <laughs> and I turned around and I said to them, I said, before all of these dignitaries, I said, I will not be responsible. I said, open your mouth. One more time. And I said, I will not be responsible when they carry you out of this meeting dead. You could hear a pin drop. Not a soul move. Not one person spoke. And I preached for 20 minutes, and all of a sudden, in the back of the stadium, somebody let out a scream. And they took a little baby, a little child, looked like four or five years of age, and they started to push it over the heads of the people until they got it down to the front of the platform. And I looked at my interpreter, and I said, what's happening? And he said to me, Brother Cirillo, somebody shouted way in the back there that this little child, this little baby, while you were preaching, who was born totally blind, all of a sudden began to reach around in the arms of the person that was holding them, the mother and the father, and began to see. And the blindness is gone. The little child is perfectly healed. And he said that, that they, they just threw the baby up here because they didn't know what else to do with it. <laughs> now, I, I got the mother and the father through the crowd. And when we got them through the crowd and they stood there with their blind baby perfectly healed, Perfectly healed, perfectly healed. The general behind me stood up. And I can see him to this day with all of his uniform of war. And he put his hands on his head like this and he said, scream. He said, my God. He said, that's my neighbor. We stayed in Haiti for three solid weeks, night and day, morning service, afternoon service, evening service. It took only two weeks and we shut the Mardi Gras down. They had to stop because there was nobody in the streets. They were all in the crusade, getting saved. Somebody say authority. This new level of strategic prayer that will penetrate the darkness has to be anointed with divine spiritual authority that gives power to our words that we speak. <laughs>